Hey everybody, welcome to another ChatGPT tutorial and today we're going to be talking about career transitions. Now, you may know that you want to transition careers, whether that's to be getting out of something that you absolutely despise or pursuing something that you might actually love doing, but you don't have experience. Great. I want to validate you that this is something that happens to pretty much everybody nowadays. There are no linear careers anymore. So you're not alone, but how do you actually execute a career transition? Today we're going to go through in this chat GPT tutorial a prompt that's going to help you understand a step-by-step -step plan no matter where you're at in your journey. This is going to help you eliminate that self-doubt. It's going to help you eliminate that anxiety of this career transition and give you something that you can do, again, applicable to any type of transition. Make sure you stay till the end because I'm going to also show you two different types of examples of these transitions, explain other different types of transitions, and all this information is going to be necessary to you depending on your specific case. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to this side and I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller here. Whoa. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at initially the prompt in detail. So this prompt is made up of a few different things. One, it is uh, up here. I have zero tech experience as a program project manager and I want to transition into the tech industry in the same role. I'd like to a personalized roadmap based on successful frameworks and best practices for this type of transition. I'm going to give you my resume so you can see my past experiences and skills first. Then you'll make a plan that includes skill gaps. I have any transferable skills that may apply and a roadmap of ideas for what I can do to close the gap. Are you ready? If so, say yes, I'll give you the resume. Now let me talk about a few different points of the prompt because I want you to be really good at prompt generation so that you can do these kind of things yourself without even needing uh, a tutorial like this, right? The first thing that's really important is the specificity. Now one, I'm giving specificity of the fact that I don't have experience in this particular place. I do have experience in this particular place and this is the type of transition that I want to make. There are different types of transitions. This one that I'm showing is an industry transition, right? Because this person has experience in program and project management, but does not have that specific experience in that role in tech. A lot of the people that come to me that want to do remote work end up wanting to get into tech because that's where there are more remote professions. So totally understand that and that's very common. Now the second piece of this, I'd like a personalized roadmap based on successful frameworks and best practices for this type of transition. Now these two different phrases, successful frameworks and best practices are things that I use very frequently in my ChatGPT use and that is because it gives ChatGPT that signal to use these other things that it's got from the ethers of the algorithm to use and the different frameworks. Frameworks are great. We always want to be working in frameworks on ChatGPT if we can. Um, also, we're going to give the resume and the experience and skills first. That way, ChatGPT knows what it is that we do have and will be able to identify those skill gaps and then give the roadmap, right? Uh, and then the last thing here is, are you ready? If so, say yes. I tend to do like to do prompt chaining. That means I ask ChatGPT, are you ready to go to the next step? And I make sure that it confirms with me that we're ready to go to the next step because that ends up usually giving a better output when you give ChatGPT those types of instructions, okay? Last thing here as well is I'm using the default 3.5. I wanted to show everything uh, that you can do for free because I do have the, the paid plan, but this is you're capable of doing this on the free plan. Okay, so it says, yes, I'm ready to help create this roadmap. Please go ahead and share your resume. And then this is a real resume from a client of mine. It is obviously a changed name. I don't work with a John Doe, but what we looked at was just copying and pasting the entire current resume that this person has. And they have specific types of program and project management that's not in tech industry, it's in government. So that's where it's gonna be interesting to see what we get back. So now ChatGPT says, thanks for providing your resume. This is great. We're gonna identify the transferable skills. So this is the first layer of things that you're gonna be able to use from your past jobs in a potential project manager role in this new industry, right? And I think it's actually easier for people to transition from the same role to the same role in a different industry in a lot of cases because you're gonna have that same technical experience and you know 
he's worked on computers before. It's not as if tech is completely uh, an enigma to him, but the difference will be the products in which he is responsible for, right? In tech and in some of these large government contracts, those are two very different things. So it says, hey, here are the transferable skills, strategic thinking, communication, leadership, documentation. So when I'm building out my resume, when I'm building out my LinkedIn, when I'm building out a lot of these materials to articulate my value to a new company in tech, these are the top of the top of the thing top of the uh, of the chain of what I'm thinking about are these particular skills to highlight and I'm finding these things in the job descriptions for the tech roles and saying hey how can I apply what it is that I've done in the past and then there's also the fill the, the skill gaps right which is tech knowledge there may be certain tools there may be certain concepts there may be certain things that are different in tech that are in government uh, tech terminology you know also just being able to communicate within tech teams uh, about these uh, development methodologies and the coding basics certifications there are a lot of different things that you might want to consider when you're filling those skill gaps to be able to do that I'm just make this a little bit bigger okay and then there's of course networking and I think networking is going to be the prevalent thing in all of these different cases because networking is the far and away best way that you can transition into a new industry and that's by finding the right people that are, are going to be able to give you some of that guidance as well as attending some of these industry events these forums this is going to be the place that you figure out not only the terminology but the, the players in the game and then how it is that you can have these conversations with certain types of people and then personal projects i love personal projects as far as building some of those skills especially if you don't have experience on the resume it also goes to further education tailoring internships you know got a bunch of different things here i was like okay that's great we have this ba these basic suggestions that are based on best practices, but I want an actual plan. I want a roadmap, and I constrained it to three months. So I said to ChatGPT, based on this plan, provide this three-month roadmap, and I want daily, weekly, monthly habits, milestones, and outcome-based goals that align to my goal of making this transition. Because, yeah, all these things are great in theory, but what is it I need to be doing, and how do I measure my success? So then it gives me a month-by-month, -month, week by week look at what are the things I would I would do. First thing is skill building and networking. So then it gives me a couple different daily habits. Spend an hour or two studying tech industry fundamentals. Uh, connect with at least one tech professional on LinkedIn. Send personalized connection requests daily, which I absolutely agree with. Skill development. Enroll in an online course with project management methodologies in tech. You know, dedicate time to coding basics, 30 minutes a day. So it's really giving a month by month, week by week, day by day, assessment of here are the things that you can do to get to that thing that we're backing up into. Then it talks about practical application and networking, so joining tech-related forums or communities. It talks about continuing coding basics, again, networking. And again, this is just fantastic way of breaking everything down, and you can give specific dates too. So I could say, hey, this is, I want a three-month program today is you know, September 26th. I want to have this by uh, December 26th, whatever, if that's three months, I think that's three months. And uh, you can have these things mapped out by the literal dates too. So your ability to talk to ChatGPT in this way and ask for the specific outputs that you want is contingent on you getting, you know, whatever it is that you want. Okay, so th that's cool. This is an example of a transition from the same role to a different role, but different industries. Um, so now we're going to go from that to a much drastically different transition, which is transitioning basically industry and role. And this was a client of mine as well, who had very little experience as an editor, but wanted to become an editor and was basically working at a bar. So I have very little experience as a media editor. I want to transition into the media industry as a full-time podcast and video editor. I'd like to a personalize roadmap based on successful frameworks. It's all the same stuff there, but the first sentence is like very, very specific. So now this is Jane Doe has uh, our uh, resume in here as well and we have some small podcast part-time editing experience as well as uh, as I mentioned being a restaurant server at a brewery so these are gonna be things that this is a very big transition and I want to just remind you that there are gonna be different variables in your transition whether that be the role whether that be the industry I'm gonna mention a couple more in a moment so stick with me here because there's gonna be a couple two more important ones that I'm gonna talk about it says, thanks for providing your resume. Here are 
the here's the roadmap, right? Here's the skill gap of enhancing your editing skills. Here's the action plan. Invest in learning the video editing. Practice video editing on personal projects. Explore the tutorials. Here's the skill gap of um, being able to showcase your skills with a portfolio. So collaborate with local businesses. Continue editing podcasts. Um, attend local media uh, events. Network in the in the industry. Gain the certifications. You know, all these things are great recommendations. But again, I go down here and I say, hey, based on this plan, I want a three month roadmap. Uh, I love three months too because I think a quarter is enough to to get some data on whether or not you like something or whether or not you want to continue pr pursuing something. Uh, and I think it's got enough stake in the game to where to where it does that, but it's not too much time to where you feel like you can't do it or it's or it's like really overwhelming, right? Okay, so then now we have the three month roadmap, which is month one is skill development and networking. So spend two, three hours a day learning video editing software, connect with one new person in the industry via LinkedIn. Like the, I love these very granular process goals where it's basically on you to do those two hours a day. It's on you to send that one connection request a day and to be able to do these things, we're gonna guess that that's gonna put us in a better position by the end of the three months. And you can reevaluate and you can say, hey, I'm at the end of the three months, I wanna up this to two people a day, I wanna up this to four hours a day, you know, whatever it is that, or and you may need to scale it back too. There's, there's multiple ways to do this, but this is just to give you that initial framework, right? So here are all the different things, month two, month three, all that sort of stuff, great. But here's the thing, there are other changes that occur in transitions, right? We talked about roles, we talked about industries. I think those are two pretty big ones, but there's also another big one in being non-remote to remote, right? Because that's what this person was doing. They were working at a brewery, and now I wanna work as a remote, in a remote environment, that's gonna be a different skill set. Oh, also, I'm at a really small company I've less, there's less than 500 employees at my work and I wanna to go to a mid-sized company, 500 and 1,000 employees. So the size of the company also shifts the perspective. It also shifts the, the transition that's required. I remember early in my career, I went from a 400,000 person company at IBM to a two person company. And you can imagine that the thought process and what was required of me and, and just the mindset, everything was different. The, the level of output that was expected, everything was different. And that was a tough transition for me. So, okay, we've given, uh, we want to add this to the plan. This is another thing I want you to understand about ChatGPT. When you do the prompt chaining in this way, you can always add other layers to your plan. And just listen to your mind, and the, the more that you can do this, the more that you can come up with great questions to ask. So it's like, okay, let's let's expand the roadmap uh, for these particular goals, and then you're gonna understand that, hey, some of these are gonna be, have an emphasis on remote-friendly connections, right? So someone who maybe works at a remote company, and then you also use the 500 to 1,000 employees benchmark as the type of person that you wanna go after, right? In this, in this networking efforts, it's like, I'm only gonna look at companies that are this size and people that work remotely as the connections that I want to make. And that gives you a filter, it gives you a lens for being very specific in your networking so that you always have a target in mind of what the connections are that you want to make, okay? So then we got week three of four, we got the whole month one milestones, we got all these different things, right? So great. That gives us a little bit more perspective on how to do that. Now, another thing, let's say that you find a job description that fits what you want to do. For example, this is one on Remotive, which is an educational video content creator at Approval Max. And let's say that I'm this editor and I'm, and I'm like, hey, this job looks like a pretty cool job. It's worldwide remote. And yeah, this is something that I want to do. Well, I want to know how far is the gap from where I'm at now based on my current resume and what are the ways that I could um, bypass some of those skill gaps or, or, or close the gap on some of those skill gaps. So, so now I said, I'm gonna give you a job description I'm interested in. Based on what you know about me and my resume and the plans that I've already that we've already created, I want you to use this job description as the guide for my three month plan. And I'm gonna give you the job description. You're gonna recreate based on those specific needs. See, I'm like really explicit with ChatGPT and I think this is, I may be overly explicit sometimes, but I think it's much better to be overly explicit and overly ex explain and just say, hey, are you ready? This is what I'm gonna do. This is what I expect from you, blah, blah, blah. And so I give the job description here. Just copied and paste the whole thing in there. 
and then it says based on the job description I will create a three month plan and now look at how the plans changed a bit. The daily of the habits is dedicate two to three hours each day to practice video editing, but you're focusing on creating how-to videos because that was the main thing that was required in here. And again, it's not to say that, hey, we're gonna apply to this job in three months, but it's to give you realistic expectations for, hey, if this is the type of job that I wanna go towards and I really don't fit now, I like I couldn't be competent in this particular job, you need to be honest with yourself. And, and honest with the people that you're applying the jobs for. But you say to yourself, okay, if I'm less than 60%, less than 50% competent for this job based on the requirements, then this is a great tool to see where how it is that you can increase your competence, right? Then you're gonna research familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with these products, target audience, those things. What you might realize is, hey, I wanna work at this company no matter what, so this is a long game for me. It's not about just applying to this job right away, it's about, developing my competence over time and then networking at the specific company so that that can be something that eventually they hire me. So I just want you to understand that the thinking required is different because what a lot of people do is they'll see a job description like this and they'll see it's been around for four or five days, whatever. They'll, have, they'll feel this internal pressure of like, I have to apply now, I have to apply now, I have to apply now. But again, if you're less than 50, 60% competent with these skills, you're just throwing your application pretty much straight in the garbage because you're not at a place of competence for this particular job. So instead of doing that, take these, ex, you know, build this plan, take a few months to become a competent individual based on this type of role. And then when it comes up in the future again, or if you have some opportunity during the next few months, you build relationships at the company without needing anything. And without asking for anything in, in particular. You're just building those relationships for a future purpose. So I just wanna like say those things because I think it's really important that your mindset actually change. So then it's gonna give me some other milestones that are very specific to approval max. You determine whether or not those are relevant for you, right? Because some of these may not be uh, completely relevant to that three month journey that you wanna take. But again, we are using ChatGPT to get from, to, from zero to one. What that means is I don't have a plan and now I have a plan. And that's really important that you understand that everything that ChatGPT gives you as an output is going to be something that you edit yourself. Okay, so we are through in this tutorial today. Um, again, my name is Jordan Carroll, aka the Remote Job Coach. I help you leverage AI to land more remote opportunities in less time by maximizing your productivity and efficiency. If you like this video, you want more, check out the prompt I use. It's for free in the video in the description. It's linked as well as other resources that you can download. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check out these other videos. Two, and until next time, keep wondering, you're not lost.